In this presentation, we're going to see how to use R to fit data to a power law. Our example will be pendulum data, the period of the pendulum versus the length of the pendulum, which theoretically was a power of one half. And we'll see how to use, how to adapt the linear model built into R to, to fit to this something that's not a straight line. So first I'll remind you what we got from the data when we used Excel. So here was the data, the lengths of the pendulum and the periods of those pendulums. The, pe the period is the time for the pendulum to swing back and forth and it depends on the length. And we copied this data over to Excel. So with that data in Excel, we highlight it, we insert an XY scatter graph, and then we choose quick layout number nine and right click on the fit and decide to format the trend line and choose a power. And that's what gave us the graph shown here. And we see that there is a power law form with a power of 0.487, close to the theoretical value of a half. There's a coefficient out front of 0.21198, etc. So here we are taking that same data and bringing it over into R. So the first line length equals C, open parenthesis, and then we have uh, five numbers. Those were the lengths of the pendula. And so we are creating a length vector, and we use the C function in R, the concatenate function, and it creates a vector. So in line one, we create a length vector with five values. In line two, we are creating a period vector with five values. And then in three, we are creating from those two vectors a data frame. So the data frame sort of brings those two vectors together and makes them one larger unit called a data frame. So here we are using the plot method in R. We have plot open parenthesis, then we have the x values, pendulum dollar sign length, comma, pendulum dollar sign period, the y values, another comma, and then three more arguments. Main gives us the title at the top, x lab gives us the x label, and y lab gives us the y axis label. Remember that there's an alternative notation where we would say pendulum dollar sign period and then a tilde and period dollar sign length. So if you're, if you're using the comma, it's x comma y. If you're using the tilde, it'll be y tilde x. And you can see the result there, the period versus length data. Next, we are using the LM method from R, the linear model method. And normally we would say linear model, open parenthesis, and then we would have the Y values, tilde, and the X values. But that would be to fit to a straight line. But we, in this case, are fitting to a power law. So instead of having just the Ys and the Xs, we have log of the Ys and log of the Xs. So we have LM, linear model, open parenthesis, log, open parenthesis, pendulum dollar sign data, close parenthesis, tilde, log, open parenthesis, pendulum dollar sign length, close parenthesis. So that is giving us the linear model of the log, log data. We're calling this pend underscore fit. And then we are getting the summary of pend underscore fit, and we're looking that in the console. And we see a number that's familiar to us. If we remember the Excel from a couple of slides back, the 0.487, that was the power in the Excel power law fit. And here it is looking like the slope, but it's the slope in the sort of log log data of the linear model. Just a reminder of something that we've done recently. We simulated a random walk and the, the first point, the first X and Y point of the random walk was zero, zero. But when we fit our data in Excel, we did not highlight that first data point. And that was because we are fitting again 
random walk to a power law, and a power law has hidden behind the scenes uh, taking logarithms. So Excel just d hides the logarithms from you, but we're doing it more explicitly in R. But that was why in Excel, why we had to skip over that zero, zero point, because Excel was doing the same log here. It was doing it for us, but it was doing the same log that we're doing here in R. And you can't take the log of zero, so that's why we had to uh, not use that number. So pen underscore fit is the result of the linear model. And the linear model has a lot of parts, and we want to extract one part that this power. Okay, so pen underscore fit, one of the parts was called the coefficients. So we that's the part we want. So we're saying pen underscore fit dollar sign coefficients. Coefficients was a vector. It had a number of parts and we want one of those parts. So that's why we're using the square brackets. And in this case, what goes in the square brackets is a name. And in this case, the name, as we can see up there in the summary, is log parentheses pendulum dollar sign length close parentheses. Oh, I always copy it from what's in the console from the summary and never try to figure out what it should be myself or type it myself. I always copy and paste. It's the easiest way. And so that is the convenient way to extract this power of 0.487. Again, Pendulum fit is the linear model. It has one part of it is the coefficients. So pen underscore fit dollar sign coefficients. Coefficients was a vector, so square bracket. And then the elements of the vector are named and the particular name we're interested in is log parenthesis pendulum dollar sign length close parenthesis. So again, pen underscore fit is the name of the linear model. It has coefficients. We usually refer to these coefficients as the slope and the intercept. The power is related to what we would normally call the slope. And so it, we want what was our, our x value. And our x value in this case was log of pendulum of the dollar sign of length. And then we are getting that slope, that coefficient. And that is the power. So here I'm going to do a derivation of these results. If you understand the derivation, great. And if not, then we'll just sort of go through the steps and memorize the result. So we're starting off with the power law, y equals a times x raised to the b. We're going to take the logarithm of both sides. So on the left, we have log of y. And on the right, we have log parenthesis of a x raised to the b. The logarithm of two things that are multiplied together is the sum of the logarithms. So on the right hand side, we can move down a step and get to log of a plus log of x raised to the b. Next, uh, the logarithm of something raised to a power, the power can come out in front of the logarithm and multiply the logarithm. So now we have log of y equals log of a plus b log of x. And so now we see we have log of y equals log of a plus b log of x. So log of y is in place of a, a y in a, a normal straight line, and log of x is replacing the x in a normal straight line. And so b is multiplying the, the log of x, so that makes it effectively the slope in this new thing. And if we want our original uh, the intercept now is log of a, and if we want the original coefficient of the power law back, we're going to have to undo the log, and the way you undo the log is an exponential. So here we have another one of those long expressions. Let's start with the interior of the exponential, pen underscore fit, dollar sign, coefficient, square bracket, intercept. So we saw how to get the slope, and now we are just getting the intercept. So pen underscore fit was the linear model. It had coefficients, so it was pen underscore fit dollar sign coefficients. There were uh, two coefficients. Uh, this is the, the intercept one, so we use the name intercept. Uh, in the summary, it comes with those parentheses around it. I always copy from the summary. 
And then we just argued on the previous slide that if we want our original coefficient in the power law, we need to take the exponential of that. So that's what that final sort of exponential around everything else is doing. In lines 27 and 28, I'm using the round method to uh, limit the number of decimal places so that the expression is not too long that I'm going to put onto the plot. So I've rounded fit underscore power to five decimal places and the same for the coefficient. Okay, in line 29, we are using the paste method to put together the equation. So we're putting together several parts, y equal, then the coefficient, then x caret for raised to the, and then the fit power. So that creates the equation, but it does not put it on the graph. That is done by the text method shown in line 30. And so it has text has three arguments, uh, an x value, a y value, and then what it is that you want, what text it is you want put on the plot. So the 40 is an x, so it corresponds to on our graph on the horizontal axis, roughly 40. The 1.9 is a y. This corresponds to the roughly the middle of the equation that we're placing. And then the third argument is the equation that we made in line 29. And our final step will be to draw our fit function, our power law that we derived onto the plot. And so we're going to use the curve method to do that. And the first argument is the function we want to plot. So we want to plot our coefficient times x raised to the fit power. Remember that all multiplications must be made explicit. So coefficient asterisk x caret to use raised to the fit underscore power. That is the function. Remember also in curve that the variable must be called x. Then the next two arguments are uh, the range of values we want to plot over. So I'm going to start at 30. So if I, if you are disturbed that I didn't uh, sort of catch that first point, then you would just change my 30 to maybe a 20 or a 10 or get a little bit closer to that uh, first data point. And then the 110 is where I decided to stop. So these are just the first X and last X, the, the range of data that I'm plotting over. And add equals true means I'm not replacing any previous plot with this new curve, but I'm adding this curve to what I already had. So I had a plot of the data and I'm adding this curve to it. And then my final argument there was that I'm choosing the color blue for my fit.